Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome to my hangar. Uh, today I'm going to be synchronizing the carburetors on my Rotax 912 UL. Um, I had the engine out so I could pull the water pump, send that off to leading edge airfoils to get a new seal put in. Now, hopefully this is the last step to getting it ready to fly. Uh, I know it runs and I checked the oil, I did the oil purge and checked the lifters and we're good. So that's a good start, right? Now I just need to sink the carbs. Um, this is important to get it to run smoothly because you have two separate carburetors, one on each side. And if, if you got more air fuel mixture in on one side than the other, the engine's going to produce unequal torque pulses from each cylinder and it's going to run rough. So I'll zoom you in here and we'll get started. But oh, I should also remind you, uh, if you're new to the channel, I ain't no A&P. I am not Rotax trained anything, just uh, doofus who's maintaining his own experimental amateur build airplane. Okay, right now the throttle is wide open. I'm going to unhook the spring here. A little pokey thing. Just let it let it dangle. Uh, it's basically against the stop here, so I'm going to loosen the cable. We're going to start with the mechanical sink. Uh, it's eight millimeters, I believe. Yes. Just loosen that up a bit. Then I can bring it back to idle and not have the cable fall out because the throttle is shoved all the way in. Okay, so I'll back off the idle screw. Should be a one and a half turns to do it. So there's one half, one, one and a half, and I'll go to two. And I'll take a feeler gauge. This is 0 0.004 or four thousandths of an inch or 0 0.1 millimeters. And holding the th throttle closed in the bore with one finger, I can stick this in here and it's pretty free. And I can, I want to run that screw in until I just start feeling drag on the on the uh, feeler gauge. Uh, yeah, I'm just feeling some drag there. I Hopefully my big fat hand isn't totally in the way. A little bit more. Yeah, right there. I like that. Okay, so that gets me. Now, right now, the throttle plate is closed in the bore. It's not a good place to leave it, well, because it idled too slow, and plus it can jam. So I need to turn it in one and a half turns. One half, one, one and a half, and that is the setting for the mechanical idle stop. And I'll go do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I don't know what I recorded on the other side, so I'll peat and repeat it on this side. Open the throttle up. The throttle inside is wide open. I should be able to rehook my spring here. There we go. Spring is sprawing. Now against the stop, wide open. I'll snug this up. You don't want to over tighten this or under tighten it. Okay, still needs to be free to wiggle like that. Okay, so that should be good. Let me go to idle. Okay, the throttle inside is at idle. The other carburetor does not have that wiggle giggle in it. So this one's open a little bit. So I'm going to tweak it slightly just to get it as close as I can mechanically. 
need to screw this out. Okay, I have run out of adjustment. I'm close to it. I'm going to go to the other side, let's screw it in a little bit, and uh, be right back. Okay, I now have both sides so they feel about the same. That'll be my starting point, and then we can get into the uh, pneumatic synchronization. Okay, so I've undone the crossover tube here. Now I've plugged one hose in here, one hose on that. They go over to my gauges. Okay, so I've got the gauges hooked up. I've got them marked right and left. There's two of them. Uh, right and left, according to which side they're hooked on. And it always, to me, takes a certain amount of mental gyration to figure out if the difference in the gauge reading is what, which way do I turn the adjuster. So, if the gauge is reading further this way, I got more vacuum. It's a vacuum gauge, which means that this, you know, uh, well, actually, the other side, ignore the right and left for the moment. But the carburetor it's connected to is closed too far if there's too much vacuum. So I want to open the throttle a little bit on that carburetor. And to open the throttle, I screw this adjuster on the housing in towards the carburetor. So I drew an arrow here. And if it's too far that way, I come in. If it's too far that way, I go out and I either one carburetor in or the other carburetor out depending on idle speeds and things like that. Okay, so that reduces the chance of me doing something stupid and backwards. So let me put this inside the cockpit and we'll push the airplane out of the hangar and see what happens. At this point I'm going to use some screenshots because juggling the camera and the gauges and everything else. Uh, the video was nothing short of a disaster. But what I'm showing here is I have the valve to the left intake manifold closed. That's that red valve under my finger. And the valve in the crossover connecting the two gauges open. And then this way both gauges are connected to the right hand manifold to the same vacuum source and I can compare the vacuum on both gauges to make sure that they're the same. And here you can see the, the numbers are pretty darn close. The needles bounce a bit and that's about as close as you can get. Now here I've closed that crossover and the valve to the left manifold is open just enough to let the needle register without bouncing too much. And here I'm above 3,000 RPM, a little high uh, in RPM. There's about one inch of vacuum or three to four kilopascals. But the imbalance that you see is higher when you get closer to idle where the throttle plates are nearly closed. Uh, and a small change in angle makes a relatively big difference in the airflow. At wide open, for example, a couple of degrees of throttle angle does absolutely nothing in terms of vacuum. So I slowed it down a bit, and I'm showing about 14 and a half inches of vacuum on the left, just over 12 and a half inches on the right. So the difference has increased to about two inches, or eight kilopascals. So I can move the adjuster on the right carb outward to increase the vacuum, or what I elected to do was move the adjuster on the left carburetor inward to decrease the vacuum and get them closer to a balance. Okay, since this gauge was reading further this way, that means there's more vacuum, which means I need to open the throttle, which means I move the cable inwards, move this housing inward to let the throttle open up a little bit, because it's pulled closed. And last time when I was fiddling with it, you know, you got to turn, I'm going to loosen this off. Got 
Okay, so there's one turn. I put some purple on it, but to actually do anything, now I gotta tighten this up. I think when I was trying to set it, originally I was turning this and not turning, holding the nut, and that doesn't work. Okay, so now it's, I backed this off one turn, tightened this one turn, so the housing is moved that way. That's increased the slack. Let's let the throttle open just a little bit. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it looks like I went too far. I need to screw that out. I'll take it out about half a turn, and that should be pretty darn close. Okay, that wasn't quite enough. I'll try it again. Two adjustments later, and I've got it down to the point where there's less than an inch of vacuum difference, so good enough. Okay, I still managed to confuse myself even with the markings I put on, and I fortunately had the Weiss label maker with me, so I created the label and stuck it on. Move adjuster in to reduce vacuum and move the gauge clockwise. Hopefully next time I'll do it the right direction.